Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Both Peter and Jennifer sent me this story involving the Lemon Law. And when you see the Lemon Law in the title of a story, eh, it might be something I'm interested in. Now, it's not happening in Michigan where I'm licensed to practice law, but all 50 states have got Lemon Laws and they're all slightly different. And so Colorado has just improved their Lemon Law a little bit. Lemon Law changes mean more protections for consumers. That's the story from 9news.com. Janet Oravetz wrote this, and she says a newly updated law taking effect Wednesday adds protections for consumers who purchase a vehicle turns out to be defective. The law expands which vehicles are covered by the law, increases the duration of lemon law protections, lowers the requirements for a vehicle to be considered a lemon, and extends the amount of time consumers have to file a lemon law claim. So if you're in Colorado, listen up. The law also clarifies the amount that consumers can receive in a refund and provides protections for consumers who are considering purchasing a used Lemon Law buyback vehicle. I talked about this before. When vehicles get bought back by the manufacturers, they aren't taken out in the ocean and dumped. They aren't crushed. They are simply washed, waxed, and sold to somebody else as a used vehicle. Now, they'll quite often fix what's wrong with it if they can, or at least try to fix what's wrong with it, and then sell it. And they'll often, often, it depends on the manufacturer, they'll often simply extend the warranty on that particular problem for a little period of time, and they'll disclose it. But it's not required to be disclosed in every state, at least not by statute. You could argue a misrepresentation claim if somebody knows and doesn't disclose it. Another story altogether. About a dozen states require title branding, where they actually put it right in the title. It says this vehicle is a former Lemon Law buyback. So the attorney general of the state said, Colorado's Lemon Law, which used to be one of the worst in the country, just got a lot better for consumers. It used to be one of the worst in the country. He goes on to say, if you're in the market for a new vehicle, you can breathe a little easier knowing you now have more protections against buying a lemon. And if you're buying used, you now have more information and negotiating power if you want to buy a lemon buyback vehicle from a dealer. So while defects should be covered under a vehicle's warranty, The law protects consumers from being stuck with a defective vehicle. And we're talking about repeated problems or severe problems to where you buy a brand new vehicle and it keeps going back for the same problem, or it spends a certain amount of time in the shop. And that's what varies from state to state, how many repair attempts it would take or how many days in the shop it would take to qualify as a lemon. So the new law in Colorado expands the vehicles included under the lemon law to include motor vehicles used by small businesses for both business and personal purposes. And in some states, if you bought a vehicle and you bought it like it's in your company name, but you drive it on a daily basis, it might not have lemon law coverage because they say, oh, it's a company car. It's not personal, family, or household use. And a lot of lemon laws say specifically it must be for personal, family, or household use. And the question is, does it mean entirely for personal, family, or household use, or does that mean partially? So they clarified that and said, hey, if it's a small business, lemon law might cover it still. It extends the duration of lemon law protections to two years after purchase or within the first 24,000 miles of the vehicle's operation, whichever is earlier. Some states cap that much, much shorter than that. And so by lengthening that, it gives you a little more protection. So if you've had the vehicle for two years and it's got some problems, or or you drove it 24,000 miles or less and it's got problems, that's what you're looking for. It lowers the requirements for a vehicle to be presumed a lemon from four failed repair attempts to three of the same defect or after the vehicle has been out of service repair for 24 or more business days. In Michigan, it's 30 days, uh, but it's not business days. It's actually just days. So uh, also a defect significantly impacts the safety of the vehicle. It's presumed a lemon after two failed repair attempts. So your brakes fail once, they fail a second time. (laughs) Do you want to go back and try a third time? You feeling lucky? punk. It also extends the amount of time for consumers to file a lemon law claim to 30 months following the date the vehicle is delivered to the consumer. And any time that a vehicle is under repair and unusable does not count towards this limit. Prior law limited this to six months following the expiration date of the manufacturer's warranty or within one year of delivery to the consumer. The new law also clarifies the amount that may be deducted from a consumer's refund by providing a formula that the manufacturer follows to calculate an allowance for any use of the vehicle. Uh, We often refer to that as a mileage deduction. So if you drove the car and got some use out of it, you may have to pay for it, which makes sense. This ensures a fair and predictable 
refund process. And the law also gives consumers more information about uh, the law when buying used Lemon Law buyback vehicles by requiring that a decal be affixed to them indicating Lemon Law buyback as well as a notation in the vehicle's title. So it will be noted in the vehicle's title and will also have a sticker on the car. Of course, stickers on cars disappear, but notation on the vehicle's title is interesting. Uh, but I can tell you right now that what happens is a lot of times vehicles get bought back and they get shipped someplace where that law doesn't apply. And it depends on exactly how it's written as whether they can do that here or not. But uh, it could just be that instead of saying just roughly a dozen, it might be a little bit more than that now regarding title branding. So people in Colorado who believe they've purchased a defective vehicle or who may have any consumer issues with vehicle purchases could file a complaint with the Attorney General at StopFraudColorado.gov. And so I'll keep in mind, and i got to point this out to you, that I had friends who worked at the Attorney General's office in Michigan, and they had a consumer protection division, an actual division devoted to consumer protection. And I got to know them very, very well years ago, and they told me they were buried in complaints. People would just send them complaints, and they're running around trying to stomp out fires, and they were overwhelmed by it. So when people have defective cars, if you complain to the AG's office, the AG's probably not going to do anything for you. Don't think that they can represent you in your Lemon Law claim against the manufacturer. That's not going to happen. So look for a Colorado attorney who does Lemon Law, and they will explain it to you, and then they will handle it for you. But uh, if you want to, you can always file a claim with the AG about this. But the real key points here are that it's changed the thresholds as to what makes the vehicle a lemon. The repair attempts and the number of days in the shop have been shortened. The length of time you can file a claim has been added to. And likewise, the length of time within which these problems occur has also been lengthened. So that's extremely important. But again, I've mentioned before, all 50 states have got lemon laws, and they're all different from one another. Some states say there's two different ways your car can qualify as a lemon, number of days in the shop or the number of times it's down for the same defect. Or uh, some states have a third one, and that is uh, a number of times you've had a failure of a safety-related system, uh, steering, brakes, things of that nature. Uh, so again, uh, they've made the law much more effective for consumers in Colorado and so I, I'm glad they've done this. I'm surprised they've done this because a lot of lemon laws got passed years and years and years ago, and they almost never get updated. Uh, Michigan's has only really had one overhaul, and that was uh, when they changed the law. Originally, it only covered cars that were purchased, and it didn't cover leases. And to me, that was mind-blowing. And I remember as a, as a young attorney, people come to my office and say, I got this defective car, I leased it. And I'd have to say, well, the lemon law doesn't cover you. But other laws do, and we'd file, a, we'd file an action, and I'd get a phone call from a defense attorney going, Steve, there's no lemon law coverage here. And I'd say, well, look at my complaint. I don't have a lemon law claim there, do I? I've got a bunch of other claims, breach of warranty, mag moss, that kind of stuff. And then the law did get changed. And I've mentioned before, I was invited to Lansing by a legislator who said, Steve, would you like to testify on behalf of consumers? I said, I'd love to. I'd love to. And I showed up at a hearing chamber and a bunch of people up there asking me questions. I was under oath. Long before social media, so I have no photographs of this, but just trust me, it happened. And uh, I told the story about a client of mine who had a defective Corvette. And, and I, I, I think I even brought the repair orders with me. But my client had a defective Corvette that was hands down a lemon. And um, unfortunately, he leased it. So couldn't make a lemon law claim. And I told the story. And then, of course, I was the only person testifying on behalf of consumers. There's all kinds of people testifying against it, saying, oh, we don't want to buy why, why would you have lemon law coverage if you don't own the vehicle? You're just leasing it. <laughs> okay. And uh, there was a guy there who represented a lobbying group that had something to do with General Motors, who, of course, uh, has something to do with the making of Corvettes. And after the meeting was over, he came running over to me, and he hands me his card, and he goes, have your client call me. I'll take care of that Corvette. <laughs> I go, were you not paying attention? This happened a while ago. We filed a lawsuit, which we did settle. But what do you mean you, what, like, what do you think you could do for this guy? And the guy goes, oh, I'd see to it that the car got fixed. And I go, a Chevy dealer already tried and failed four or five times on a very serious issue. What makes you think? And the guy goes, 
And for whatever reason, manufacturers often take the position that none of these cars are defective. None of them are defective. It's just unhappy customers and buyers remorse. And I've got some people you could talk to that I've dealt with in the last 33 years uh, and the problems they've had with their cars. Uh, these aren't imaginary. These are serious problems. And uh, I can tell you, I've even represented the same vehicle twice. A client of mine bought a brand new truck. It had all kinds of problems. Ford bought it back, sold it at an auction. The same dealer that had taken it in the first time because they'd sold it the first time, bought it at the auction, took it back to the dealership, and the car came with, at the auction, a description of the problem that said it's this lemon law buyback and, 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 you know, and, and, and an extended warranty to cover that system on the vehicle. And I did not know this at the time, but I had someone call me and say, hey, Steve, I've got a case. I've got this defective vehicle. I bought it from this dealership. I think you want to handle the case. They go, but I bought it used. And I said, well, I don't handle used car cases. They said, oh, but I think you will on this one. I go, why is that? And they go, you've already represented this truck one time before. It got bought back. And the reason I know that is I've been bringing it in for the exact same problem that your client brought it in for. And I said, I'm curious, how did you know that? And this person said, well, after I bought the truck and it started having this trouble, it's still under warranty. I started bringing it back in and they keep telling me they're trying, but they can't fix it. We're trying, but you can't fix it. I said, well, did you know it was a lemon law buyback? And she goes, no. I said, what did you get when you bought the vehicle? She goes, what do you mean? I said, well, there's supposed to be paperwork that comes with the vehicle to indicate it's a lemon law buyback. Not a branded title, but this is something that Ford was doing voluntarily, just in Michigan, even though they didn't have to. And she goes, no, I didn't get any of that. And so filed a lawsuit against Ford. And interestingly, I couldn't file it as a lemon law claim because it wasn't a brand new vehicle. My client purchased it and didn't qualify that way. But it was a breach of warranty, Mag Moss, and all the other stuff. And when the attorney from Ford called me and said, hey, Steve, you don't often file used car cases. I said, no, I normally don't. I said, but I've represented this truck before. Let me tell you a story that someday down the road, I'll be telling my audience on YouTube. Didn't say it quite like that, though. And at the end of the story, he said, oh, let me take a look into this. And called me back and said, yep, we'll buy it back. I said, really? Under the lemon law? And he goes, not really, but don't worry about it. And of course, the dealership, their defense gets picked up by the manufacturer. And I suspect that the manufacturer's attorney called the dealer's attorney and said, we got a little bit of a problem here because the vehicle got bought back by the same dealer that sold it. Doesn't matter if you're going to claim that you saw that disclosure or not. They did. But that disclosure didn't get passed along because there's a document that they asked the new buyer to sign indicating that they're aware of the buyback and all that stuff. And they had no such document in their deal folder. So the vehicle got back a second time. And I suspect it got taken out of state and sold someplace else, so I would never see that vehicle again. <laughs> but that's an example. And so if my first client was simply buyer's remorse unhappy, why was the second client having the exact same problems? And so what happened was my client had brought the car in repeatedly for the same problem, and one of the service writers pulled her aside and said, just to let you know, this vehicle's a lemon. I, I know it is. I recognize the vehicle. I recognize the problems. Because, see, the dealership, when they punch in a VIN, it can kick up the warranty history. And so you might not recognize a Ford truck being brought into a Ford dealer for repairs. But if you're a service writer and you hear someone complaining about the exact same thing and you go, wait, this rings a faint bell. Oh, this is that vehicle. There you go. So anyway, I've gone astray. I apologize. But this story is from 9news.com. Uh, Jennifer and Peter sent it to me. And Janet Orovetz wrote that. So if you're in Colorado, good news. If you're not in Colorado, I hope you found it interesting at the very least. Questions or comments, put them below. Otherwise, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. It's not the years, honey. It's the mileage.